Hello and welcome back to another video of RE Framework series. In the previous video, we had a sneak peek into the RE Framework and understood why we need the framework. We also saw the different components on which the RE Framework is based. And in this video, we will take a step further in order to understand one of these concepts. And namely, it's known as the transaction process. So without wasting any time, Let's have a look at different type of processes. They are namely linear, iterative and transaction process. In the coming slides, we'll go into each of this process and see how they are different from each other. So the very first process is nothing but the linear process. And in order to understand the linear process, let's take an example. And this example revolves around invoice processing. So let's assume that you've started a new company. And since it's a small company, the number of invoices that you process every day is very less. So let's say it's just one or two invoices that needs to be processed per day. And this invoice is located on your local system. And let's say it's stored in a folder called invoices. And in order to process this invoice, we have created a bot which follows three steps. It first reads the PDF file, extracts the data, and saves it in an Excel file. Once all these steps are done, we say that the invoice are processed and a notification is sent to the user. So if we try to translate these steps into a workflow, it might look something like this. Wherein the very first step is the initialization. And in this step, we just see if a PDF reader exists on the system or not. And if it does, we go to the next step, which is nothing but the get invoice step. And in this step, the bot is asking the user for the location of the PDF file, which is nothing but the path here. And once you have given this location of the PDF file, the bot then goes inside the process invoice step and then follows all these three steps, which is part of nothing but this particular state. And once the Excel is saved, you go to the end state and within this end state, you're just sending a notification to the user saying that the invoice has been processed. So if you have a look at this particular process, it's very simple to automate. All you need to do is give the location of the PDF file and the bot processes the invoice. But now just imagine that instead of having one of two invoices per day, you need to process around 100 invoices. So this could happen because your business has started to grow. And now instead of processing one or two invoices, you're processing 100 invoices. And if you try to process your invoices using the linear process, you would have to run this particular bot 400 times. And during each of this run, you will have to always specify the new address of the PDF file. And in such cases, Instead of running the bot 100 times, it makes sense to do it in an iterative way and pass all the invoices at one go. And this brings us to the next process type, which is the iterative process. In this process, we'll take the same example, but instead of processing one invoice or two invoices per day, we will be processing 100 invoices per day. And each of these invoices are stored in one particular folder known as invoices. And in this case, instead of running the bot 100 times, we we'll pass the path of this particular folder to the bot. And then the bot will take each of these invoices at one go and process each of them in just one run. So if we have a look at the process itself or at the workflow, it might look something like this. It's entirely same like in the previous process. The only difference is in case of get invoices, instead of passing a single invoice, we will be passing the entire path of the folder, which consists these invoices. And once you have the folder consisting the invoices inside the process step, we will be processing each of these invoices one by one. And once all the invoices have been processed, a notification mail will be sent to the user. 
With this, you are able to solve the problem which was created in the previous case, wherein you just need to run the process once and all the invoices are processed. But this particular process can also lead to a problem. Now just imagine that while processing all these invoices, let's say you are on invoice number third, and on this third invoice, the bot faces some problem. And when the bot faces this problem, or when the bot fails to process this particular invoice, the third invoice, the bot would stop there and would stop the processing of all the other invoices. In such case, the bot will fail and this would lead to the failure of processing of all the other invoices. So now just imagine that in a folder of 100 invoices, where there are just two invoices which are faulty, and because of the fault in these two invoices, you are unable to process the rest 98 invoices and your entire bot fails. This problem is occurring somehow because all the invoices are linked or dependent on each other. And if any one invoice fails, then all the other invoices fails as well. In order to solve this issue of interdependencies between invoices, we need to move to the next process type, which is called the transactional process. In the transactional process, we'll take the same case wherein you have 100 invoices that needs to be processed per day. And again, all of these 100 invoices are stored in a folder called invoices. But in this case, unlike in the previous case, instead of passing the entire folder as an input, you will be passing a list of all the invoices. And this list might look something like this. So now let's have a look at how the workflow might look like. So we again have our initial setup stage, but in the get invoice state, instead of passing the folder path of all the invoices, you will be passing a list of path of all the invoices. And this will go as an input inside the get invoice state. And what will happen is you will try to process each invoice one by one. So now what will happen is each invoice will be processed one at a time. It means when you go from get invoice state to the process invoice state, instead of passing the entire list, you will just pass the name of the first invoice file. And once the first dot PDF is processed, then you go back to the get invoice state and then again process the second PDF file and once the processing is done, you get back to the previous state and then keep following this back and forth till the time all the invoices have been processed. And in between, if any of the invoices fails or is faulty, the bot will just ignore that particular file and move back and proceed with the next transaction. With this particular process, you're actually making each of these invoice or to say each of these transaction as a separate entity. And by creating this independence of transaction from each other, we are able to also scale our automation. So now just imagine a case where instead of 100 invoices, you're taking care of 1000 or even 100,000 of invoices. And even if one of these invoices is faulty, or maybe even 100 of the invoices are faulty, you still will be able to process the rest 999 files. So I hope the concept of transaction process is clear to you or why this particular process serves as a backbone of the RE framework and how it helps in scaling automation as well. Well, that's all for this video. So now in the coming video, we'll be talking about state machine, which is the second concept on which the RE framework is based. In this video, we'll try to also compare how state machine is different from flowchart and why do we choose state machine and not flowchart. Well, that's all for now. See you soon again in the next video. Till then, keep safe and keep automating.